Well, hello and welcome to the Two Echo podcast. I'm Harry. I'm with I'm James. I'm James. Hi. How are you doing, James? So I sort of interrupted your introduction of me there, but yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> no, that's fine. We won't do it again. We, 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 we do things on the fly here. <laughs> Back on the podcast. I think it's been a little while since we've been on the podcast. I'm going to check when we were last on. Yeah, it's probably been about a month. We've had a well, we, we've had a fairly chaotic few months, as um, we'll we'll bring you all up to speed on. July the fifteenth. It was when we did our podcast on Mono Lake. That's ages. That's two months. It's been two months. It's been that long, but time flies. Time has flown. Time has flown. So, um, how have you been anyway? What have you been up to in the past two months for for the people? Um, Well, to cover is, I suppose, we went on holiday to the Lake District. Oh, super nice. That was good. It was so long ago, I don't even remember. Um, <laughs> we we've, we've had some trials and tribulations with um, Tukaneko practice space. Mm-hmm. Um, we ignited the dream of a Tukaneko bungalow, um, and a lot of work really. But let's not cover that in too much depth. <laughs> yeah, work is way too boring for the Tukaneko podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what about yourself? Oh, I've just been um, just sort of bumming around. <laughs> <laughs> that's very honest of you <laughs> um been on holiday as as you said to the that was oh, so, so nice those um the mountains are just they're just so nice it's so scenic up there mm. so good um then we'll cover it, we, we'll cover yeah, it in more well, depth later in the podcast oh yeah we'll cover more depth we recorded a new song called normal times very mm-hmm. exciting stuff and then we spent a, a probably about a month now trying to sort out some some rehearsal space some permanent rehearsal space which has been a serious it's been, it's been a bit of a trial yeah <laughs> and it's unresolved it's unresolved right now whatever the opposite yeah. of straightforward is higgledy piggledy <laughs> it's been a it's been a winding village lane bendy backwards yeah we're sort of like a single car lane where like you take that corner, you don't know if someone's coming the other way. It's guess what? Yeah. You don't know how many noise complaints around the corner. You can't see them. <laughs> spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> um, cool. So how are we going to add value to the Two Echo audience on our podcast? Um, I suppose we could talk a little bit about like things that happened since July and how they relate to Two Echo and what they might be able to take from us going on holiday or our new song. or There's all sorts well, of stuff we could explore. Well, we we we. I, th- I think where we can add some value is we we want to dive deep into the options for permanent rehearsal space for bands because this is something that we really want to sort out for ourselves. Um, and and we've 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 made a lot of progress. We've learned a lot, um, uh, and we haven't come to a solution yet. But we can certainly talk about our journey so far in the hope that it provides mm. some insights. Um, and obviously, holiday recommendations, Lake District. <laughs> So you can travel. That'll be so a good post-COVID travel. spin-off. Yeah. Um, to be fair, I'm sure travel influence is probably a, a good gig. You know, just yeah. flying around, like, having sort of mango lassies by the beach. Yeah, tropical sitting drinks. Sitting in hammocks. Like, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure it's one of those things that's totally glorified by the Instagram and mm. probably the talk these days. I wonder what kind of travel talkers there are. Interesting. No, I'm sure they mm. exist. I'm Maybe sure they just, exist as well. Just travel mini hacks that you can do in 15 seconds or a minute. Or how long is a long. TikTok video? Is it a minute? It could be up to a minute. Maybe wow, we need to get on this. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've always thought like maybe we should just become a electronic band. So all we need is a laptop. So we're like more mobile than we are now. Because all these yeah. like guitars and stuff, they take up <laughs> space. They're holding us down. You know. Let's not even get started on drums holding us down. Whereas if we could just program stuff, or maybe we yeah. become like musical directors and we just we just Producers. get session musicians to play what we would have played, but we're much more... We're, we're, we, we've got great creative minds. <laughs> yeah, but we not, can't be bothered to actually play the parts ourselves. I think that is where, that is our trajectory. Okay. Eventually I mean, that we're delegated great. to such an extent that we won't even need to pick up instruments. All we need to do is think of the... Well, it makes me like a composer. But, but I, I, I like playing the instruments. 
That's that's one of my favourite parts. Yeah, but robots will do it better than us. Nah. Robots are playing your style better than See, you do. You know, eventually, I've, 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 been, be... I've been thinking about this a lot recently, and um, <laughs> because obviously drummers drummers are the first ones to go. You know, like um, drum machines were invented in the eighties. Like mm, they basically they, already that happened ages already ago. Extinct. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. But we're still here. It's it's not like drums have disappeared, <laughs> even though there's a drum machine. And do you know why? It's because you can't get groove and feel out of a drum machine. Mm. I'm safe. It's coming. It's coming. It's not. You live in caves now. It's not. I, I, I've been trying to figure this out. Like, how how do you how do you become a drummer that's just got this great feel? And it's it's, it's so intangible. I'm, I'm starting to think that every drummer, after they play for a certain amount of hours, um, or how, how many years it takes, just develops their own sort of groove and feel and it's like unique to them i think i think that's um i think there's something in there mm. which is why drum machines haven't taken over yet so i feel like well this is kind of funny like we were talking to your flamma aaron the other day about like metronomes and yeah. being on or off the metronome like are they helpful because it's kind of yeah. unanimous at the moment that like bands should play to a click and that everything should be recorded and quantized i mean this was particularly about quantization he was sort of saying mm. oh that mix was so difficult because i had to go in and quantize things and i was like oh i've i don't think i've ever quantized stuff. <laughs> um if anything i like the bits where they go on it just made me think about i mean yeah both but i mean that's just playing to a click that's just a human playing to a click i'm not saying mm. necessarily that we shouldn't do that but yeah quantized compared to sort of floating in and around the click is definitely different Mm. Um, but then also whenever we've recorded like full drums in one place we've never kind of been able to capture that even that even if you we're using an electric kit and you're playing the same patterns effectively mm. um there's something about it that's just not the same as just putting mics up and capture like what a human does to the drums in a room yeah the kind of it's, smushiness is it's, it's it's a performance uh, aspect mm. it's like you, you can really hear what was happening in, in in the room I guess and you don't really get that with samples like there's mm. there's just oh, I feel I feel like it's slightly intangible and, and, and maybe eventually there'll be like an AI that can create this intangible effect but um, there's definitely something about hearing real drums in the room that just it makes things sort of just mm. smush together it just sounds a bit yeah it just, it just I mean I guess maybe just because you've got room mics and they're very hard to emulate in a in a digital setting, I, but I think it's I think it's stuff like just the small accents or like different or oh, accidents or like anything that kind of happens that just you wouldn't have sampled to such detail. I was yeah. looking up e kits the other day, which is linked to our practice space struggle. Oh god, yeah. Um, but I was looking up e drum kits, and some of the things are so funny. They go, technology is so advanced now that you can even grab the plastic single symbols to like choke them. Yeah, um, and I was like, I mean, that's pretty cool, but this kit's like three grand, and that's something you can do with an actual symbol, like in the real world. Like, it's just a thing. Yeah, that, that doesn't have a price on it, but like in the digital world, this is a three three thousand pound feature. Yeah, this you is, can't plug so an advanced. analog symbol into a MIDI, can you? Yeah, yeah, it's so advanced. We can do something you can do yeah. already with any symbol. Um, but yeah, no, you can't. Uh, you can't plug it into a MIDI or get all those like different drum kit sounds, but. Yeah, mm. just kind of related to our practice space. That's something I've been digging into like mm. quite a lot recently. Um, I, I, I've got a great example of where the real thing is just so great. I've, I've been listening to a lot of James Brown recently, and oh, yeah. he's there, there, there's there's an album on Spotify. It's just like a compilation, and it's just like it's, it's called like James Brown seventies um, funk classics. I'm but, put this in the show notes. Oh yeah, def James definitely. Brown seventies funk classics. Uh, I, I, let me just verify that I got, I got the title right there because um, this 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 um, album is so um, classic, kind of funky, seventies, all those things. It's so like it's, it's so much like you're in the room, <laughs> mm. and obviously like James Brown's got this like uh, he's got this serious energy when he's um, performing, even though even if it's just on a record. But um, the reason I bring this up is because the, the drums on this one they're like. <laughs> They're all over the place in terms of the metronome, but they're funky as fuck. So it's just like the, it's almost like the most extreme version of just like no metronome 
is still funky. Like, mm. where you've got, I don't know, quantized EDM on, on one end, you've got um, James Brown 70s funk classics on the <laughs> other end. <laughs> Occupying the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, my favourite example is the White Stripes playing live, um, <laughs> which is kind of, you know, the rawest of the raw, particularly if you apply a metronome sort of thing. Um, yeah. But, like, they'll just start a song at different speeds and kind of, it's like a, like, sort of various speed on, like, your vinyl player or something. Like, woo, woo. They're just, like, merging slowly to the same... Converges to what feels right. Yeah, and that's exciting. I'm like, are they going to make it? Are they not going to make it? Because so, well, um, cause Meg will just come in really fast and Jack White will be really slow and then they're just like, yeah. woo. Yeah, I can't remember what... Um, I think it's, like, Black Math or something. I might put that in the show notes if I can find it. But, um, really going all, all out on the show notes. Have we ever had a show notes before? Uh, I mean, we've had blurb. I don't know if we've actually linked to stuff we've talked about, but we mostly talk about ourselves. So yeah. this is probably the first time we've actually referenced anything outside of ourselves. Do we even have a place to put show notes? Yeah, under the show. Well, cool. You know, the bit where you describe the podcast. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, we do. We won't be awesome. denying people the show notes. We'll put it that way. I've got I've got another um, little anecdote on this sort of um, branch. Um, I was um, watching an Instagram live um, by by a drummer called Carter McLean. He's epic, and I think he's like a session musician, um, but he's so good. Anyway, he was talking about this kind of thing, like quantization versus unquantized, and he used the same metaphor that we do, James, where like quantized pop music is like candy, <laughs> like sugar, directs the brain. <laughs> yeah. Um, and 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 he was saying that. Um, Things like um, James Brown, I, I don't think he's James Brown in particular, but he used a couple of other artists. They're like your, your, your green veg, like you, you need them to be healthy. Um, and, and his point was to actually like get groove and become like a great drummer, specifically drummers in this example. You have to listen to all this groovy, funky music. If you're just listening to quantized pop, you're not going to be able to play with groove. This, this was his theory. Um, so... Yeah, I found that quite interesting. Quite like the five a day approach. Like <laughs> yeah. a diet of like, we should definitely draw out that plate with like different <laughs> drummers on it. What a yeah. great idea, like sort of a, a Tucan Echo meal plan of yeah. music. Ten minutes so, of pop a day and no more. <laughs> yeah, there's there's definitely something there. There's definitely some bit of content there where we yeah. can like post in the morning a meal plan for the day, but it's music. Yeah. And it can have a little bit of pop, a little bit of groove, a little bit of wabby sabby. Oh, mm. and, we, and the, we could have a picture of just a dinner plate, like cut up, you know, like those diet. That'd be so great. Me, the musical diet is what you need to build up a strong and healthy musical aptitude. Yeah, we could be a musical nutrition brand. <laughs> so you're not going to get anywhere just listening to Dynamite by BTS on repeat. Yeah, <laughs> I then. mean, you, you almost fell into that trap. <laughs> we'll add that to the add that to the notes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a pretty quick one. Harry just put on some K-pop and was absolutely entranced for, like, at least 20 minutes. All he wanted to listen to was K-pop. He booked tickets to Korea. <laughs> <laughs> to BTS, who are arguably one of the biggest, well, the biggest band in the world, released a track called Dynamite, and it is absolute dynamite. Um, at least, well, for the first, like, four or five listens, you're like, ooh, can't, I can't even stop listening to this, to listen to this thing. It's just like... <laughs> It's just so addicting. But then it gets old super quickly. It's just like... <laughs> it's all like Pringles. Yeah. Do Pringles get old? They get stale, don't they? Yeah, but I'm not sure if I would get tired of eating them like back to back. Because they're kind of thin, so maybe they're not Pringles. Like, maybe BTS's pop catchiness is too thick to be a Pringle. Yeah. It'd be something that's super tasty, but maybe gets like really filling really quick. Or you just... Or too sickly. Yeah, it's probably like some sort of Harry Bows. Mm. Yeah, they're quite they're quite Moorish though. I'm trying to think of something that's Moorish for like five iterations and then. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> listeners. If you have any ideas of what <laughs> <laughs> BTS uh, Dynamite by BTS is in terms of sweets, then let, let us know. Love it, Harry yeah. at Chikaneko dot com. <laughs> Getting the plug. Not sure anyone's actually emailed us yet. <laughs> I've been sure? emailed so many times on the podcast, and all my deep and roaming thoughts. I'll have talked for like an hour about guitars, and no one emails me. Oh, nobody cares. 
but eventually they will care. Um, we're going to keep contenting. Um, oh, I've got so many because me and Harry haven't actually had any preamble to this call at all. Um, mm. I've got so many things coming to mind that I want to talk about, um, but I don't know if they're podcast worthy. I'll, I'll put them on the list and then um, we'll, we... we'll address them if we get time after we've addressed what we said we were going to address. Where should we start? Should we start with um, sound and practice space? Yeah. Um, so I have a, a bit of an origin to this because I remember the, the idea of this first came to me in like lockdown. Not that mm. I came up with the idea that we should get a like permanent practice space, but I remember like really researching it in lockdown. Mm. Um, I'd kind of got to the point, particularly in these COVID times, like how much will we be able to go back and forth to kind of shared spaces and and gigging didn't look like that was really happening and stuff. So I just had this thing of like, oh, I think one of the things that's blocking us is essentially what we want to do is make as much content as possible, um, practice as much as possible, like gel, like get better. Um, but also, yeah, just be able to churn out like, videos and recordings and stuff of us playing because just that's what we need to do um and we've kind of found that one of the blockers was not having a permanent practice space so i kind of got into my head that oh, if we can sort this this like solves a lot of other problems particularly me carrying a lot of a quite personal investment in this because <laughs> i carry a shitload of gear you basically <laughs> carry a studio to each of our practices yeah i mean i've given a, a good chunk of it to you as well now but yeah. um some of the guitar stuff's heavy um and so whenever I was like a sort of turtle any time we go to well a turtle that puts its shell on whenever it wants to go make groovy music but like a pack mule <laughs> yeah it was, yeah maybe, maybe like a donkey being packed with yeah. stuff going up a hill like I would just be absolutely heaping just sort of wheeling a case and everything like just to get to practice and then we'd set up all our mics and um, yeah not just uh, recording stuff not just our instruments but like video as well um, and we were kind of doing this set up, pack down, all within kind of three hours mm. in, t- in total of, for the whole practice, including set up and set down. So got this idea that like we should get our own permanent space, mm. like just just a room where all our stuff is pre-set up and we can have like video set up how we want. We <clears> can <throat> use it like whenever we want, because also like the costs of practicing at the level that we now want to practice, which is like multiple times a week. Mm. Really three, up. four, five, like that kind of level, um, is expensive and time consuming to to keep go traveling back and forth and doing that. And, um, as I said, setting up and setting down. So permanent practice space with the idea. Don't really know if that was a very very useful anecdote to intro the story. I feel kind of might have said just obvious things there. Anyway, carry on. Um, oh, good. So started digging around, and actually that's way harder than it sounds. Is way harder. So, I mean, you, you obviously start looking at this thing and say, right, Google search, permanent band rehearsal space London, and there's just nothing. Nada. <laughs> like, absolutely um, zero. Um, so then you, like, kind of re- get get better at search, like, long-term let, uh, studio space, <laughs> and all this stuff. And and, and there, there's, like, every couple of months something appears um, in London. Um, mm. But it's, it's so expensive. I mean, as you'd mm. expect in London, uh, places are just ridiculously expensive. Um, so it is kind of a dead end unless you're absolutely loaded. So, um, so you kind of get a bit stuck, but I think we do have a solution, you know? Um, and it's, I think it works. Um, and it might work for us. It's almost like our backup, but the solution is, um, storage units. (laughs) Mm. This is the only viable option I could find in my initial searches. Yeah. Um, and so the one we therefore pursued later on, Mm. um, and uh, yeah, so it, it happens. That, I mean, bands have been doing this for quite a while, um, particularly in like the US, where the storage units can be properly out of the way, yeah. and people are just turning up for like a three-hour band practice, you know, like once a week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so there was wait, kind of there was this one company in London who accepted mm. noisy musicians um, in their storage units. So. Mm. Um, we started to investigate whether we could occupy one of those, rent one of those out and practice mm. sort of whenever we wanted and set stuff up. And um, yeah, I mean, in principle, it was all fine. And uh, I think you went and looked at them first, right? Yeah, yeah. There, there were a couple of occasions for us, like around King's Cross where I live and then 
uh, one at um, Baker Street, which is a bit more equidistant um, between yeah. the two of us. But like, uh, sort of, we went for the Baker Street one because it was closer to both of us. And like, looking more medium term, we're both looking to live in West London or South London. In, in, we're looking to move there in the next couple of months. Um, so that location worked. Um, but we were like, we were just like a kind of test for them, I reckon, because it was a new facility. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, right, new facility. And I was I was really pushed with them. I was like, right, we're, we're definitely going to be able to make noise, you know, because it would be a disaster if we can't make noise after buying all this stuff for this unit. <laughs> You're very like, oh, yeah. like, oh, yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, you can you can make noise. No problem. No problem at all. Like, worst case scenario, it'll be like, like a... 11 p.m. curfew, like, great, that's that's the best news I've heard all year. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so we funny. move in. That is um, the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> you said it kind of deadpan as well. <laughs> that is amazing. That's I'm so, so good. Oh, my God. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we move in. Um, and then, uh, what was it, three days later? Yeah, fucking noise complaint. <laughs> Was it three days? I think, I think it was like three days worth of practicing. Yeah, I'm not sure if it filtered through to us by that point, did it? I Is think it, it really was really that short. It feels like longer. I think it was three days. Yeah, because um, yeah, essentially we enacted, we researched it up until our Lake District holiday. Um, mm. Then we went and climbed some mountains in nature. Um, so good. Went to some pubs, had some food, sort of hung out, chilled out, refreshed. Yeah. And then put, and made some plans of like what we we're going to do when we got some space because we're like, oh, we can film like XYZ jams and put together a sort of cohesive like second jam. Mm. It was all very exciting. I, I feel um, like we should like dig into the benefits of this unit actually a bit more because we, I feel like we downplayed it. Like we would literally have, the, the, the dream is to have cameras set up the whole time, mics set up the whole time so we can just pitch up with nothing but our clothes and our musical brains <laughs> just like sit down at our instruments like plug in and fucking record and like press a button and live stream instantly with no mm-hmm. setup because for those of you that don't know setting up a room to do a live stream probably takes a good hour mm. <laughs> like it takes a really long time um so it's just like... Our, like crappy little setup that's not even that complicated that's just literally putting a camera up yeah yeah so it's just be able to like pitch up after after work or whatever and just like do that it's a it's it opens up so much um especially if we can go there all times all times of the day anytime at night well th- th- this was the dream like 24 hour access mm. um and we live the dream for like three days you're so good like yeah um, and we also <laughs> we also put in the we spent like a good well week of my holiday like Going back and forth, like going back and forth, cutting up curtain to put on the walls. Yeah, we Sourcing carried through. rugs across London on the tube. Yeah, um, why you know wired it all up? Um, transported your drums in there, like in big a old Uber. Uber. Yeah, um, you know it, we we spent a few days getting it ready, um, and got a couple of good practices in there. Because we're also going like out of earphones, so we set it up so that we can just monitor using in ears mm. rather than like me blast vocals out there. And um, my guitar through the Kemper, which is direct in anyway, so mm. we had the kind of sound sorted. All, all we were recording was the drums and the vocals, and then mm. um, yeah, we had the guitars going through. So it was quite a good setup. At least it, like wasn't too loud for us. We could mix the sound well. Um, all going well for three days. Testing, isn't it? Yeah. Then. Uh... <laughs> So the, the the storage facility actually had flats above, above where we were playing, which dun, is like dun, dun. it's like oh my god, there's flats above, but you still say oh yeah you can make noise. There's only one flo- one floor above us. <laughs> no wonder they complained. Um, so anyway, um, <clears throat> I feel like we should speed up the story, but we moved downstairs because they had a basement level in the same same storage facility. Set up everything, moved everything down. Uh, a couple of days later. Probably another three days, we, we, we get the noise complaint again. So we we have to move out. So we no longer have a storage <laughs> unit. And this is where we are now. That was in, our short-lived story of the yeah, practice space. <laughs> in limbo. We, we, we were living the dream for just six days, probably in total, where we had access to a unit. It was a glorious six days. Best six days of my year. 
Yeah, best six days ever. Um, so now we're in a situation where we can get permanent rehearsal space in an awkward location here, at, here in King's Cross, which is good for me at the moment. So yeah, with the same company, there's another location yeah, yeah. where it's a bit more secluded and they already got musicians there mm. um, and, and they're fine. So I think it was just the situation of this storage unit that meant we ended up getting lots of noise complaints. Um, mm. Yeah, bit of a bit of a musician rite of passage. I'm sure we are not the first and won't be the last. Um, Wear them like a badge of honour, these, these noise complaints. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we had a record of them, like like an email or something, so we could just print it out. Yeah, you're going <laughs> to be on, on a wall of shame in the council <laughs> building. Yeah. <laughs> wanted. <laughs> yeah, wanted. Serial noisy drummer. Yeah. Um, so now we're looking into all sorts of things, like... I, I guess that'll be a part two of this podcast, is our, our kind of findings into quiet practice. So if there's any solution where we can set up in a... in, like, a flat or a or a house... Uh, where we can just reduce the noise to the point where we don't get noise complaints. I think that's that's phase two of our research. Um, but for now, phase one, storage facilities are a good solution for those bands that are looking to take it to the next level to mm. get some full-time space. As long as, well, I guess <laughs> it is as good as, as a solution can be that's cheap, as long as you're close enough to a storage unit. Um, mm. well, it's quite a weird... Um... It's quite a weird recommendation considering we tried it and got kicked out very quickly twice. It is. So I'm not sure how firmly we can recommend it apart from like if you can get one which doesn't have noise complaints, it works pretty well. Yeah, it works like a dream. And if there's like more than two of you, it's actually not that expensive. So. Mm. But then <laughs> depends how big your unit is, it could be more crowded. Yeah. It's quite warm is the only thing. That was I think it'd be fine, just get a fan. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't try it with a fan, to be fair. That would be my only uh, reflection of our six days of glorious uniting, as I would be yeah. like like I'd run mm. a marathon afterwards. <laughs> Obviously, we bought a fan. We invested in a fan for the unit, which we can no longer use. <laughs> so that's just more more investment. I'm sure we can use it. I'm sure we can use yeah, it. We'll find a way. We'll find a way yeah. to use a fan. We'll, we'll find another warm practice space so it won't go to waste. <laughs> we'll make sure it's stuffy. Um, yeah. But yeah, so our kind of search continues um, for where we're going to do it but I think it's still we kind of had to go back to the drawing board well literally straight after the noise complaint we went to the pub after the second time when we'd been moved down to the basement yeah. and got kicked out there as well and yeah. so we're like what are we going to do <laughs> discussing a whole range of options between packing up and leaving home and moving to the middle of nowhere yeah. where we find some random farmhouse um, and, and use that um, all the way through to should we just give up on getting a permanent um, permanent space and I think we've ended up in that we still think a permanent space is worth having and we could move into one of these other storage units which I'm sure we can do a follow up podcast if we end up doing that mm. just with purely positive reviews of it um, oh, yeah. but um, one of the other options which I suppose yeah, we'll touch in, on more when we know more for certain or not yeah. is trying to find a house that's secluded enough that we could do some sort of quiet practice. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of one of our other options. So yeah. that's what we're, we're looking at because me and Harry are going to get the same. We're going to live in a flat together in like a month or so's time. Exciting um, times. Two can towers for real. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait till we get an actual castle with towers. Um, <laughs> that'd be amazing. I don't think we'll, ever, we'll never be able to afford towers, James. <laughs> <laughs> maybe like just be... a dilapidated one maybe like a national trust thing like if we look after it mm. they'll let us stay there kind of thing you know if we get good at sort of landscaping so we'll become like groundskeepers yes that <laughs> custodians of some old castle that we can then brand <laughs> that'd be quite good you know there's there's something about that kind of secluded lifestyle that, that attracts me mm. just a bit more out of the way no kind of big bustling busy city to to distract you and make you make you think all these bad things about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Away from the the dark place, the urban dark place. Mm, yeah. Um, so yeah, um, we're not very far progressed in our quiet practice thoughts. Um, apart from we found a potential bungalow that uh, has like a, a separate building, sort of outbuilding that's a garage um, mm. that looks sort of almost perfect if you were going to set up a little music 
band studio whatever hmm. in it um don't think we could be full volume like we could for our glorious six days in the storage unit um but yeah that's what we're looking into but this is this is like harry's yeah. choice which is <laughs> do we <laughs> do we yeah. quieten the drummer do we quieten for, the drummer <laughs> Um, and yeah. uh, go sort of electric or or muted acoustic. I don't know, but yeah, I might go visit some places over the next few days. Or I mean, by places I mean drum shops and try out some. Oh, can I come? Quiet. That sounds good. When I mean, we might, might be able to do a weekend thing. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, that sounds good. I mean, are there any drum shops where they've got the good kits? Should be able to find one. You want to find one with like a conversion kit? <clears throat> What's the conversion kit? Well, the one oh, that they right. convert acoustic drums into. Mm. Yeah. The, the drum set ones are pretty nice. Um, yeah. But they're really expensive. <laughs> That's the problem. So annoying. Ugh. Um, anyway, yeah, so we've kind of had some, some deep, introspective moments, conversations on how we're going to solve this problem. Um, yeah. I think... But... I mean, yeah, it kind of depends on, like, your... Not just about the e drums but just this sort of thing in general. It just depends on your, like, attitude. Because a lot of people, like, wouldn't bother trying to do this sort of thing. But, like, when it's something you want to do or something you're passionate about, interested in, or you can see the benefits of it, you kind of mm. don't get too deterred by, like, being shot down, if you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Do you know what? I've, I've, I've sort of... Um, I quite... I, I get... It might sound quite weird saying this, but I get a bit of a kick out of it because... Um, it's like you, you don't know that you're well, to do something that's like new and exciting you have to do something that's sort of kind of never been done before or something that's really hard because if mm. it wasn't hard no one would do it so to get all this like adversity it's almost like we're doing something hard mm. so if it is a good thing it's likely that no one's done it before so mm. um, there'll be some sort of niche in the market it feels like we're trailblazing in a sense um, mm. I mean, I'm sure we're not, but <laughs> it feels like, it feels to us in, like we are. In, in our own sort of localized way, it feels like we're trailblazing. And e- even if we're like um, behind five percent of all musicians, it's still still better than nothing. I mean, mm. it's, it's, it's progression for us. Um, so yeah, so it's interesting times. But I think part of that has led to the reason that we've done quite a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but not put much out because we've put quite a lot of energy in trying to find ourselves like a proper space to jam and record stuff. Mm. And we kind of expected there to be a influx of, um, stuff of like Delicious content, content. And, new, and new stuff, yeah. you know, new, uh, new material, new videos, new songs, whatever, when we had that space sorted. So we kind of put our normal jam schedule and content wheel on hold to do that. But, mm. um, it's not materialized yet. Although I think it will, you know, it will see. So. We'll um, see. And then we can start piling on more content because that is that is the ethos that we need to switch on the machine as much as much yeah. content as possible. Um, hence why we're doing a podcast today. So we're not doing all bad. We're, we are back in some form. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. I don't know if we should talk. We recorded a song, which is probably what yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if we should talk normal times. Um, yeah. I think we can do a proper discussion once it's out and ready. Yeah. Um, so for the hardcore Teak and Echo fans, you will might recognise that name, Normal Times, for, for a little minute-long clip we put out on our Instagram. Uh, when mm. was it? It was probably like early lockdown time, so maybe... Like April? May. April, May sort of time, yeah. So, so we recorded a little minute-long... Um, demo for a track called normal times and, and we came back and we recorded a full length version of the song it's, it's probably like it's almost three minutes long now so we tripled Whoa. its length <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um so we did this we, we just spent um a couple days i think it was three days actually was it three days or was it two days i think it was two days it was two two days in the studio uh recording this song um oh, it's so much fun <laughs> recording songs um it was good. Yeah. We absolutely powered through from like the morning all the way through to like late those days. Yeah, yeah, we had some long days. Um, but you don't feel it. You don't feel it. You know, you just. No. I felt refreshed. I felt good to go. 
so it's, it's just so energizing mm. so day two so so day, day one we recorded the drums we like set up the room um i wanted to get the drums right for this one because um i quite i quite like the grief so we, we spent quite a lot of time doing the drums um so that was day one and then day two we just did everything else <laughs> it was pretty intense <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah did the bass the guitars the vocals yeah the organ um mm. sound suppo- effects yeah. sound effects i suppose we did a bit of arranging on day one as well so we sorted out the actual songwriting as well mm. so mm. yeah um but didn't we do some of that at a practice before actually as well we didn't necessarily do that all on the drum deck. oh yeah we, we did do a little bit yeah. most of it in place mm. um but yeah so that was kind of one of the first songs we wrote when you did just did a drum groove first and then I made yeah. a song on top of it. So it's kind of mm. part of our lockdown writing style. Yeah. Which is kind of oh, fun. We've actually got an entire video on this oh, yeah, on yeah. YouTube. We can put yeah. that in the show notes. Oh yeah, show notes. more show notes. This is great. Oh, they're going to be absolutely busting. This swamp for like homework. <laughs> um, normal <laughs> times. Yeah. Original vid. Yeah, it's even got a little like behind the writing Thing, mm. which was um which is good i think we should have done more of that i've got more like random footage going around of me writing other songs but it's quite distracting to write a song and also talk about writing a song while you're writing a song you kind of you need mm. a bit of you need it the camera to be on in the background really and then like edit it after um, I f- yeah I, I feel like the way you do it is just have the camera running the whole time and then when you've like come across an idea and you're like confident with it then then you like Turn to the camera and be like, hey. Mm. And then you just go, <laughs> this is it. This is what I made. Stop this right there. Like, lu, lu, lu. And then, and then you just make it. it. <laughs> You're just sitting there like in stone cold silence for like five minutes, just like. <laughs> um, just thinking. I mean, I, try, I tried to integrate some of it. So I did like, I screen captured myself like writing the lyrics and then sped that up. Um yeah, that was good. Because there's like an hour of writing, you can see it just mm. going back and forth and round for like a one minute song. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's kind of exciting to make that into a full one. Um, I think we're going to try and release it as soon as we can so that we uh, keep the COVID vibes. <laughs> make make sure it hits when everyone's feeling the COVID vibes. Oh um, God! Because it's a, I mean, it's not it's not sort of is it directly about. Well, I don't even really remember. Um, there's, there's definitely an essence of it being about like a positive, optimistic um, look forward to when this is over because obviously it's not going to be like forever. It's just going to drag on longer than we want. Mm. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's just a, I remember it being at the time just like right, everything's a bit bleak. Let's try and like put ourselves in the mind of like being beyond it um, and seeing it as like a opportunity to correct or not go back to what things before like an opportunity to change rather than just a like disruption and so rather than just going back to normal it's like what 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 things were bad about the normal before that don't necessarily have to be the case in new normal you know what i mean i like that treat it as a fresh start yeah um it's going well it's going well. <laughs> actually we're still in lockdown my fresh start can still happen that's all right wave two baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah. let's go um, for context, the podcast being recorded um, twenty second on the September. day that yeah on the day that they were just announced they're going to do some more restrictions for perhaps up to six months. I mean they're not that stringent. No, they're not. They're not much. It's like, it's like the ten pm curfew, isn't it? The Baker Street pubs are not going to notice anything because they will close oh, yeah. at ten anyway. Pub review. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Here's a segment. Pub <laughs> here's, here's, here's a new segment. Pub review. So. If you're ever in Baker Street and you want to get a drink, just leave because everything closes <laughs> so early. Just get out of there. Just just go anywhere else. We we tried so many times to get a drink after. Well, we tried at least six times because we were only there for six days to get a drink after our practices. And places just closed. It's mm. it was it's such a weird thing. Like it was probably about like half ten, half ten. You struggle to get any any sort of pint in Baker Street. Mm. I mean, they they're not like. They're quite nice pubs. Oh, yeah, they're, they're open during pubs. the day. For daytime drinkers, for weekenders, mm. all fine. But, you know, us us who prefer to um, start our sessions a bit late, having the put owls. the work in, made some music, 
Mm. Uh, so you're sort of inclined to the Spanish way of partying. Um, yeah. Yeah, not the one for you. So Baker Street, early birds. Yeah. Night owls, look elsewhere. <laughs> There we go. That's good. That's, that's a, I like that's that gold, segment. Golden <laughs> nugget of advice on the uh, on the TP. Pub review. Um, <laughs> just just shout it mid conversation. <laughs> Pub review. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely going to become a feature. I like it a lot. Um, the uh, what else is what else has been going? How long have we been going? I'm not even forty one minutes. About forty minutes. Let's think a couple more minutes. When we wrap up. You know. 45 really? minute video what? podcast. Do you actually want it to end now? Well, I feel like we've covered most stuff, haven't we? Or do we just Did, want to wrap? Ra- didn't you have on? a list? Um, I mean, those are most of the things on the list. Oh, really? <laughs> it was Lake District, but we've kind of, we've gone past that chronologically now. Can we can we go back? Is there anything else to cover? Um, hmm. I mean, my only other thing was I listened to um, Gary V's old book, Crush It, today. So he's got, He's got a couple of books, but he's got one book called Crush It and then one called Crushing It. Oh, yeah. Um, and Crush It is from 2009 when he's mm-hmm. first talking about like social media, personal branding, all this stuff. And then Crushing It is from 2016 where he basically has lots of case studies of how people who read Crush It in 2009 went and crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> and did great based on the principles, which I thought was quite good. But it's still got some new stuff. Um, That's great. Yeah, it's just, I just, uh, it's quite a short book actually, like, and that you've got to get the audio book because it goes off script like every five seconds. Um, mm. But um, it's a mate for 2009. It's unbelievable. It just I was just sat there thinking if I'd listened to this in 2009 and actually enacted it, like who knows where I would be now? Because yeah, like, who knows? It was so, he's literally it could be just as relevant today. Like it's a bit more focused on blogs and stuff. But mm. um, yeah, he's talking about like the power of social media, like running ads, like um, personal, yeah like personal branding like how to like start businesses and how to like network on social media like 2009 oh i I think i only just got facebook in 2009 yeah like yeah that's basically when i got facebook as well and but he said like i think live streaming is going to be the future really Um, oh it totally is 2009 (laughs) that's mental um so i just got facebook and he he'd completely worked it out and cracked it it's insane um so yeah, I'm gonna to listen to that man a lot more. I've I've drunk the Kool Aid. Um, I drank the Kool Aid anyway. But it's but, good Kool Aid. It's not bad um, Kool Aid. So this is why I now advise people to just make content like as much as possible, and why I feel bad that we haven't made any content. You know. Yeah. Well, here we are. I, I'm excited for the future. It's been a bit of a rough patch recently, but I feel like after this week we'll sort out where we're going to be. Sort out our <laughs> After this week, procrastination 101. <laughs> no, I thought you were talking about COVID. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. COVID just. I thought it was sort of like, oh, yeah, it's been a bit of a rough patch for the world, but after this week, things oh, are no, going to no. be great. Like, end of this week, things are going to be great. COVID's no, no, just um, part of the furniture now. You sort of take it as normal. It's just it's just life, isn't it? Yeah. So, I, I, I wasn't even considering it. I was, I was more thinking about our noise complaints. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Was that? That was last week, wasn't it? Hmm. But we're, we're going to get space. Um, we're going to move into Teakin Towers. Like right, right at, the, at the moment, we live on opposite ends of London, which isn't ideal. Um, so we're going to move into Teakin Towers, like content twenty four seven. Just like it's going to be. We're going to live stream. It's going to be like Big Brother. We're just going to be constantly live streaming. Yeah. I won't be able to pick up a guitar without a camera switching on <laughs> and it going out to the world. You know. <laughs> um, and it'd be great. Um, mm. Yeah, no, it's. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. More songs, more jams. Yeah, I mean, it's just like we've put. It's such an interesting journey from like this being like a hobby thing, but then kind of finding that the more we did it, the more we enjoyed it, and actually the more possibility there is to make something out of it. Um, we're obviously still a long way from that, but mm. it's. I don't know, like, I'm kind of. My other thought from yesterday or the day before i think i was a bit drunk when i thought this mm. but i was just like i'm gonna stop reading the news <laughs> which yes. is a very harry ethos yes don't but read the news i just went through it and i kid you not like i think nine out of ten articles was negative and they just made me think that like i get some of the there is some stuff you need to know like on the lockdowns or whatever mm. it would be pretty bad if you didn't know that yeah but 
nine out of ten things were things that, like, if I hadn't learned about them, like, I wouldn't have known they existed. Do you get what I mean? That's that's stupid, actually. That's I'm afraid that badly. But like, if they hadn't brought that to my attention, mm. it would there would have been no other reason for it to. I wouldn't have stumbled upon it in the world, if you get what I mean. Yeah. Like. Because there's no reason know, for you to know that stuff, really. Like, angry father in Essex murders whole family or something. Like, yeah. that's not really news. It, It is, but it's not... I don't need to know that. No. Or, what does that bring into my life apart from going, oh, there's murderers out, there's more murderers out there than I thought. And there's not even more than I thought. It's just that, that's just focusing on, like, the 0.0 whatever percent of bad things that happen. Mm. So it's going right to the edge of that distribution curve and putting all of it on a website in front of you. Mm. And I listen to stuff like like Gary Vee or you look at examples that like Microsoft was started in a really terrible recession or there's like all these people doing good things. Mm. Um, obviously there is a lot of bad stuff and it's an unusual time but I'm just not sure I can carry on functioning in so like little hope and so much negativity it's just it's stifling what every kind of energy or hope momentum that i had so i think i'm going to stop reading the news and start just doing stuff despite despite the unemployment figures you know (laughs) yeah it's like the alternative is waiting for three four years and that's um that's just not an option (laughs) so um yeah, don't watch the news. Don't read the news. It's um, mostly negative. You should, I, 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 I'm sure there's some sort of solution that you can sort of tailor your news to make it only stuff that you're interested in. Like, mm. um, I'm, I'm always up for some new science news or some new technology news. That's always good. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I think not watching the news or reading the news is just a guideline. Like, I think mm. you're still going to encounter it. It's just, for me, it's kind of like a crutch at the moment, I think, because, like, all the way through lockdown, you f- at least probably not necessarily, but you felt like you, you would sit and tune into it every day. And mm. there's always stuff happening now. There's this like hype of Brexit and COVID and all these things. And you do get kind of like addicted to it. You feel like you need to check in on the latest terrible it's gossip, crisis isn't it? that's unfolding. It's gossip. Um, it's like um, oh, it's, it, it's like your soaps um, and, and your gossip about what, who, who's done what and things like that. It's mm. kind of... It's uh, it, it might seem bigger and grander, but I, I kind of don't really see much of a difference um, because mm. in the very long term, both don't really have an impact on your overall well-being in general. Mm. So I don't really see much point in taking that sort of negativity and putting it in your kind of frame of focus. So. Mm. Well, something like the US election, for instance, there's loads of stuff on on that at the moment like um and there's a lot of stuff happening that like i disagree with you know there's all that trump trying to get re-elected and doing horrible things um or being very dishonest whatever and like you kind of care about it in principle but also it shouldn't take up the amount of bandwidth that it does considering that there's, there's just stuff like in my life that is in my control that is just not sorted and yeah i'm spending I don't know, just give it a random percent, like 10% of my bandwidth worrying about what horrible thing Donald Trump's going to do next. You know what I mean? Mm. I can't even vote in it. Like, I literally cannot influence the outcome. There is nothing I could, unless I, like, unless you... started some protest movement, which I'm just not going to do. Yeah. Like, it's not that it's impossible, but, like, I'm just not going to. That's just not how I'm going to spend my time. <laughs> so I'm going to consume and get annoyed about it. Yeah, I'm not actually going to do anything. Um... At, like you're forgetting that we can't even vote in it, so we might as well just let them have the argument and then tell us who they voted for. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of moving towards that point because the news is making me feel like I Do have, it. I'm helpless. Do and it. I'm not, you know. I mean, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna read the news after this. But... Don't, don't do it. Just, just start, <laughs> start with this evening. Don't read the news when you get, before you go to bed. And maybe even try tomorrow and see see how you feel. Mm. I'll do it so, as well. Yeah. We'll, we'll both not read the news. Okay, deal. Yeah, but you already don't read the news. You I should still read do. the news. Let's do a reverse experiment. No, I don't want to. I mean, the thing is, <laughs> just despite all my um, hype about not reading the news, I, I still do read the news. Um, it, it, I, I still do, you know, 
jump onto our BBC. This is like this is UK. like Harry hating Burgers Gate. <laughs> just like that. It's just one of your things that turns out not to be true. I don't hate burgers. One of your yeah, well you you do. <laughs> At least that that is the rumor. I really like burgers. <laughs> no, you don't. It's it's in my mind now. Whenever we go past a burger, I think I mean for context podcast, it's not really much of a story. But I think we were trying to select food once, and Harry so so definitively dismissed the idea of going for a burger that um, it put the fear of God into me to ever suggest it again. So now whenever we're looking for a food place, I'm like, we walk past a burger place, I'm like, oh God, it's going to get angry again. Yeah, um, I hope he doesn't Harry spot that. I protest that he still likes burgers, but in my head, I'm still afraid of the... A burger hater. An anti-burger tirade. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what were you going to say? Um, I don't even remember. No, I was, I was saying, um, I do watch the news, but I don't like, I don't let it bother me that much. I don't like to get personally invested or hooked up in it. I don't know how I do it. I wish I could provide provide advice. It's just something I've never really been interested in. So I've never mm. really got caught up in world affairs and stuff like that. So, mm. I, mean, I think I would still be interested in it. I just think I need... I feel very... I feel like I have a lot of time famine and I'm spending my remaining hours on like consuming news that I can't do anything <coughs> about and mm. like the thing that's getting deprioritized at the moment is like what I want to do stuff yeah. like to echo content. Like that should be the moment I have like a free, cause I'm doing quite long days at work. Like the moment I have a free moment, I should switch to that not switch to like crashing on the sofa and getting washed over with more negativity. And I just feel like, Oh, even the, even though I have this free hour, what's the point? Cause mm. the whole world's going to melt down and the world's gonna change. And yeah. The point, like, even if that's true, there's very little I can do about it. There sort of is, but like, I'm not going to. Without significant life changes, you can't make a difference. Mm. So, and I think that, and I do think, I still kind of maintain there is a bit of a case to keeping up with that stuff and like doing something towards like not completely abdicating it. But right now, I need to like recalibrate, reprioritize, and, and put climate change to one side, <laughs> put my activism on hold for a sec. <laughs> My zero activism. Oh, we're going to get so much hate for this, James. No, we're not. No one watches this. <laughs> yeah, but if, if people do... I don't do... do any activism, though. They can't hate me for But, the, but this is this is the kind of, of This is the kind of thing that people get cancelled for. People are going to cancel Tukan Echo before you even get off the ground. Oh. Um, I've listened to a few podcasts that might get cancelled recently. There was a really interesting Sam Harris one. Oh, well, he's he, done quite a few interesting ones he, on... Um... He, he always gets, gets treads a line between being cancelled and... Not. Oh yeah, because he did ones on like Black Lives Matter and stuff recently. Really? Where he just digs into like the data of it. Um, oh yeah, okay, that's interesting. It's oh, it's crunchy. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's good. My um, my, uh, my my brother always talks about stuff. He's he, he's read a couple of books um that are very controversial. I, I don't really know them well mm. enough. Um, and, and and maybe we'll do it one day, James. Maybe, maybe we'll dig into the data <laughs> and, mm. and do mean, a podcast on it. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to like comment on it either way. But essentially, Sam Harris's point on Black Lives Matter was that the data shows that there's no more, there's no discrepancy in police brutality. I mean, American police kill a quite a proportionally a very small number a year, um, and there's the data doesn't reflect. Let's just say the data doesn't reflect all of the things that uh, are being concluded and widely accepted. Really? Um, yeah. Um, and it's not; it doesn't invalidate absolutely everything, and there, there's still, you know, a lot of validity to the movement. But some things about there being a sort of systemic uh, targeting of certain people, whatever, by police, um, mm. the data doesn't fully support. But you need to listen to the podcast. I'm not going to tread that line myself. I'm just going to say Sam Harris treads the line very interestingly. This, this needs to go in the show notes, I think. It's called like, "Can we pull from the brink?" Um, but he does loads of interesting ones. Like that was just one of the mm. many topics he addresses in like really analytical, like just fascinating. Um, but yeah, he's done a few on sort of Black Lives Matter, that kind of thing. But then he did like one on nuclear war. That one was good. Um, he's done loads of stuff on COVID. Um, yeah, yeah, super cool. 
Um, so, <laughs> how do we sum up all of this? Unless you, have you got anything else you want to ramble about? No. <laughs> I'm good. Um, so, to sum up, um, practice space. You can practice in a storage unit. It's pretty cool having your own space, not going to yeah. lie. Um, lots of flexibility. Quite expensive in central London, but still a bit cheaper than practice space, depending on how much you're going to use it. Yeah, not not, um, not far off practicing three times a week in a, in a rehearsal studio. Mm. Um, we didn't buy that much soundproofing for it, but we did buy um, some video and stuff. So it was good for the six days we had it, but we had noise complaints. Doesn't necessarily invalidate getting a storage unit, because there are others where you won't get noise complaints, but something to watch out for if you're going to invest in a storage unit. Very concise. Um, results of the pub review. Baker Street, they close very early. Um, yeah. Night owls look elsewhere, but the pubs during the day, if you're a daytime drinker, are nice. Carson McLean says you've got to eat a balanced diet of groove. Pop music is like sugar, having moderation as a treat, if it is a treat to you. He's, he, said, Otherwise... he said cotton candy. He is. Pop music is like cotton candy. <laughs> Everyone likes cotton candy, but you can't have too much of it. Um, but you need to be getting your greens. Kale, mm. James Brown, that sort of thing. <laughs> um, metronomes, are they worth it? Don't know. Listen to James Brown's 70s funk classics. All over the place, but funky as fuck, to yeah, quote. So funky. Um, <laughs> if you want to listen to two people, try and play the same tempo. Black Math by the White Stripes. <laughs> Um, two people try and play the same <laughs> tempo <laughs> can it be done I should, have, should have done this in more of a new person voice and then we could have edited it like a headli- I mean they have the headlines at the beginning not the end not that I'll know because I'm not going to watch the news anymore um, I, I, I just love the way you said it like like it was this incredible feat that had never been done before <laughs> yeah. it's just like people massing around these two people <laughs> two, two people, people and one play metronome. music can- um <laughs> <laughs> Gary Vee was ahead of the game in 2009. Crush It or Crushing It, both good books. Um, we made a song called Normal Times. It's almost mixed. Um, it's trying to be optimistic. And I'm not going to watch the news. Have I missed anything? No. <clears throat> we could just put that at the beginning and then they could see if they want to... Yeah, T-L-D-L. Um, <laughs> so... Yeah, hopefully we are going to um, get a bungalow. It's the only other thing. Or at mm. least we're going to get some sort of permanent space and that's going to follow um, our, our thoughts on quiet bands. You know, um, Aaron finds it hilarious that we're going to go into a bungalow. <laughs> you like things are exclusively funny. for old people. The amount of yeah, abuse I've got over the last funny. week for that is just ridiculous. <laughs> it's just so practical. Yeah, it makes we, sense. We, those bloody stairs do a <laughs> murder on my knees. But then... <laughs> But then, I'm annoyed about this, because a flat is just a bungalow with, yeah. on top of another bungalow. <laughs> it's like... It's so true. It's the same. I suppose there's stairs up to it. Yeah, I guess. I guess. But, but yeah, you're but right. Not, it's just I, a I'm on a ground, of bungalows. I live in a ground floor flat, which is basically a bungalow <laughs> with a bungalow on top of it. Yeah. This is a convertible bungalow. Yeah, so, so I, I don't know who Aaron's kidding. <laughs> Mate, you need to take a long, hard look at yourself and your situation. Because you're in a bungalow, mate. It's just renamed. Yeah. I love that. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I mean, we might not, we haven't looked around it yet or anything. It's probably going to be off the market by the time time this comes out, either way. Mm. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we'll, we'll come back on our practice space if that's of interest. We'll come back on uh, normal times. More so I think I'm going to try and. Um, try and sort of spit out some more uh, rant podcasts later this week because I, I kind of miss that. I kind of miss getting my thoughts down. Mm. Um, so going to try and get the podcast back moving. I feel like we should spit out some of our um, couple of the videos we made in unit or at least one or two of them, the breathing space one maybe, just to get yeah, I think we should. get our faces back in the yeah. people's eyes, you know? Yeah. Um, any other thoughts before we shut this down? No, not right now. All right. I think that's good. Bye Thank you then. for listening, everyone. Lots of exciting stuff to come. And we'll see you around. Tiny hands. You're... What? <laughs> they look really small.
Maybe they just are. Maybe it's an illusion. Anyway, let's leave it there. Let's not. Anyway. Bye. Bye.